Hi, we're standing here at the Irvine Tea Party, April 15, 2010, with none other than, than Chuck DeVore, who just got a standing ovation. Chuck, we're happy to have you here at the Tea Party. We've seen you at other tea parties. Yes, you have. And you seem to certainly have the Tea Party support. Well, we're trying. Of course, the Tea Party is a very decentralized phenomenon, and uh, you really can't say that you're the candidate of the Tea Parties because you have to visit all of the different regional Tea Parties and, and actually get your face in front of them all and let them make that decision. Uh, but when you look at what the, the basics are, the Tea Party movement generally believes in limited government, restraining spending, and following the Constitution. Well, that's as basic as our founding in this nation, and that's certainly something that I believe in strongly. Well, Chuck, I think on your website you have listed yourself as a proven conservative. Can yes. you explain how that differentiates you from uh, your other competitors, uh, Tom Campbell and Carly Fiorini? Well, Tom Campbell does have a record in public office, and so he would be the proven moderate. Um, he supported, for example, when he was running for governor last year, he supported the largest tax increase in U.S. history at the state level, and he also supported a 32 cent a gallon gas tax increase last year while he was running for governor. Uh, he's also um, liberal on the social issues where I'm conservative. So he's certainly not a conservative, but he is proven. Now, Tom Campbell's actually won more offices than Carly Fiorina's even voted in her entire life. So she kind of represents the polar extreme. Uh, she's voted five or six times in her entire life. She uh, was at Hewlett Packard as the CEO and was let go from that position in 2005 and was the senior. Uh, economic advisor to John McCain during his presidential run in 2008. Now, in that capacity, she had a number of positions which were more moderate than she is today. So I kind of describe her as having a battlefield conversion to conservatism, which I think is great that she's come to our side. Uh, Chuck, this morning, uh, as I was getting ready to meet you, uh, she ran a radio spot. I had not heard it before on KFI, yes. where she defined herself as a quote-unquote proven conservative. Yes. Well. Uh, I don't see a lot of proven conservatives who supported Sonia Sotomayor's nomination to the Supreme Court like Tom Campbell and Barbara Boxer did. Now I oppose. I don't see a lot of conservatives who supported the bailout of Wall Street like Barbara Boxer, Tom Campbell, and Carly Fiorina did. I oppose. I don't see a lot of conservatives that ever supported cap and trade energy tax or AB 32, California's version. She did, as did Boxer and Campbell. I, of course, have always opposed. So there are three issues right off the bat where she has had, in the past, decidedly non-conservative positions. Now, again, I'm delighted that she's moved to our side, but here's the, the question voters need to ask themselves. Didn't we hear a lot of the same rhetoric from Arnold Schwarzenegger, our governor, who very quickly and sadly, of course, abandoned those principles and became kind of a go-along to get along moderate Republican? And what's happened to the state of California as the result of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger with all of his spending and growing government. Well, I'd say that we're in worse shape than, than we would have been uh, had the recall uh, been unsuccessful. And so the challenge that voters have to ask themselves is that will they actually believe Carly Fiorina's current positions or are they going to believe that perhaps these are positions of convenience because just a, two years ago, she had other positions that uh, she's now abandoned. Well, you bring up a really good point about positions. I think uh, all of the voters I've spoken to this year and last year have really kind of had it with uh, the so-called positions, which once the candidate gets into office, turn out to be really right. not their positions right. at all. So what I see happening is the voting records themselves are being scrutinized far more uh, closely yes, than ever before, and uh, how does your voting record um, s uh, support your positions? Well, let me give you a couple examples. Uh, the California Republican Assembly, which is largely uh, thought to be the core of the conservative element within the Republican Party, in fact, Ronald Reagan called them the conservative conscience of the Republican Party. I've gotten a perfect 100% rating from the CRA for the last four years in a row. My first year in office, I think I got a 93 or 94%. Well, that's the best of any Republican currently serving in the legislature. Uh, I've been endorsed by Tom McClintock, and I think that should show uh, people something, because Tom McClintock does not just endorse uh, people willy-nilly, and especially doesn't take a, a, a habit of endorsing uh, liberals, uh, uh, certainly over conservatives. I've been endorsed by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Uh, they uh, have a very rigorous test, and I've always scored above 95% every year that they've uh, studied the, uh, the voting records of those people in the legislature. And I think more, most importantly, 
Last year, when a few Republican leaders were working with the Democrats and with the governor, crafting the largest tax increase in U.S. history at the state level, I was, and underline the word was, chief Republican whip. Well, as whip, you have to work to get the votes to make such things happen. And I argued with my leadership saying, this is the wrong thing to do. It's not going to help the economy. It's not going to close the budget deficit. It's going to put more Californians out of work. And it will hurt the Republican brand because we're supposed to stand for limited taxes and limited government. And if we back the largest tax increase in U.S. history at the state level, it's going to damage our credibility just as much as it will throw people out of work. So I resigned as chief Republican whip. And I fought that tax increase and helped defeat Proposition 1A, which is on the ballot on May 19th, and lost by 2 to 1 in 2009 in that special election. Uh, I remember that. In fact, we were at a tea party back in May of last year. I think it wasn't even called a tea party then. And we saw you at a tea party last September in San Juan Capistrano. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, we've had somewhere north of uh, 320 events that I've been to since I declared for uh, the U.S. Senate. And uh, we are just doing everything we can to get the word out to every last person in California that wants to hear the word. And, and uh, it's just a very basic message of let's follow the Constitution and, and let's have basic uh, governance, uh, live within the, in your means and, and not spend more than you take in and not raise taxes and not infringe on people's liberties. Uh, and I think it's a message that people are ready to hear now. And when we saw you on Glenn Beck, uh, I, we admired your uh, position on the Constitution. Yeah. He actually seemed to be a little... Uh, not quite what, sure what to do with that. Well, uh, we got along very well. Glenn Beck is the real deal. Uh, naturally, when you see someone that's an entertainer and on television, you kind of wonder where they're coming from. But I was very, very pleasantly uh, uh, surprised with Glenn Beck. He is a true patriot, and he's very knowledgeable, and he has a thirst for additional knowledge about the founding uh, of our country, about the principles that uh, made that founding possible. And uh, I think that he's going to be a, a good force for freedom for many years to come. Well, he's certainly done some good uh, shows on uh, the history of communism, Marxism, yes, and fascism. Yes, he has. Chuck, when you are ready to run after the primaries against Barbara Boxer, you'll be running against the big Democratic machine. How, yes. how, do, you, how do you plan to deal with all that? Well, we're going to continue what we've been doing, only obviously it's going to be kicked in high gear. We're going to obviously at that point benefit from an even larger number of uh, small donors like we've been doing through our very innovative and award-winning Internet program. Uh, we're going to involve average Californians of all walks of life, and I'm going to continue to get out in areas that Republicans haven't often gone out to. Uh, for example, a few months ago, I was the only Republican speaking at the NAACP's 100th anniversary political breakfast. I spoke just before Jerry Brown. And uh, I'm not under any misconception that one speech to the NAACP is going to cause me to win a, a far larger percentage of the African-American vote. But you got to show up, and you got to start somewhere. And what I did was talk about my support for modern nuclear power as a way to have of manufacturing jobs again in America. And when I was done speaking, the head of the NAACP, who's not exactly a conservative, said to the crowd, that was one courageous and gutsy speech. And then she said, uh, and I don't see Barbara Boxer anywhere in sight, uh, which goes to the point that you got to show up. You got to show up so that people can hear you and people can understand what you stand for. Well, Chuck, one last question. Uh, we realize, uh, you realize that there are major, major issues facing the country today, illegal immigration, health care, uh, government uh, debt taxation. If you were president for one day, I don't know if you've ever been asked this before, but uh, if you were president for one day and you could tackle one issue, what issue would, would that issue be? Well, that's a gigantic list. I guess, uh, um, well, certainly we'd get rid of all the czars. Uh, how's that for a start? Uh, and uh, I think one of the great things that President Reagan did that's very underrated was he cut the Federal Register in half. The Federal Register is the compendium of federal regulations, that red tape that we all have to live by. It's now bigger than it's ever been. I think it's over 80,000 pages now. He had cut it in half in his first term, and that was just as important as the big tax cuts he pushed through. So uh, I think that's something that I'd like to do is reduce the red tape so that we can have less government and more freedom. And I think that's what the people want now. They're ready for it. And uh, we thank you very much, Chuck, and good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hey, thank you very much. You know.